We've got Jason here from the local tire shop today. We're gonna to be getting rim guard in all of our tires. Well, all the rear tires, Johnny 5, Johnny 2, and two sets for Johnny. Let's get started. I'm on rimguardsolution.com and they've got this tire fill chart. Jason says he doesn't have a gauge to show how much fluid he's putting each tire, but he's gonna be putting the valve stem right at the top and then filling right to the point where it comes out of that valve stem. I mean, these are 16928 tires and it says it takes 69 gallons. That'll be 738 pounds per tire. Let's go see what Jason's doing. So you guys get this stuff in the tote from Rimguard? Is yeah, that they come in with a big tanker and they fill up this big, huge um, tank we've got out back. And then we transfer from that into the totes. Okay. Do you do a lot of this? Yeah, we do quite a bit. I think there's either four or eight different positions for these tires being in or out. And depending on which position we've got the tire in, the valve stems will be on the inside. That's what we've got here. I moved these tires outward one setting after we got a couple of other attachments just to try to, it was kind of tipsy. So we tried to move them out a little bit. I still wanted to keep them in far enough to, to remain uh, so I could go down 30 inch rows in case I went down to the family farm and needed to do something in the row crop. But I got them out a little bit further. I think it'll be less tipsy once we get this rim guard in. Jason said that he could mount his pump on there, mount his hose on there, and then rotate the tire up to the top to fill it. Jason, do you use much calcium anymore at all? Now we take a lot of it out. It's been a couple years since we've had to put any calcium back in a tire, or a customer get a new tire and want calcium in it. We normally don't do that. We get them to convert over to rim guard because, you know, a lot of times that we go to change a tire, it turns out the wheel's been rusted out and have to get it replaced. So they, for how much money they just put into a new tire and a new wheel, last thing they want to do is put calcium back in it. So they'll just like put rim guard. The guys in Big Ag with the bigger tractors, do they use fluid anymore or are they, they yeah, pretty- they still do. Um, they end up putting rim guard instead of calcium back in their tires just because over the years, They'll just be driving through bush hogging or running into a field and they'll just tap the valve and the valve will bust out and it'll because the hole's wallered out from the rust. I'm just in the way on this project. I'm not doing anything except for asking silly questions. I'm gonna replace the valve stem caps that were on it with these ones. Okay. Just because the ones that are on it don't have any rubber grommets and that's got a rubber grommet in it, so okay. it'll better seal the tire okay. from losing makes, any air. Makes sense. So you can tell how full it is, you can hear the difference? Yeah. My hearing's so bad, I can't hear it. So what just happened there? I saw it swell out against the rim. I'm sucking out the air and replacing it with rim guard. Okay, so you sucked out too much air for a moment there. No, I sucked I mean, out just enough to where it's not gonna be too okay. much pressure on the pump. Oh, or... okay. When the lever's that way, you're sucking air. When the lever's yeah. this way, you're not sucking yeah, out. Yeah, you put your hand on top, you can feel a rim guard going into it. Yeah. Okay. When you got an air water valve, it's actually a faster process because you're not going through a small hole, you're going through a larger hole. Okay. We'll try to show you this air water valve. I've never even heard of this. When we're working on Johnny 2, I think the stems are on the outside. So we'll show that air water valve and talk about that a little bit on that. Uh, well, I get tractor. done with this one. We got a, I got some air water valves I can show you. It's not even hooked up to the wheel. Okay. Do you do a lot of compact tractors? Yeah, we do every kind of tire. Forklift tires all the way up to the great big mining equipment. We got guys that bring their, you know, riding lawn mowers in, even uh, the small bald tires that go on the mower decks. Yeah. A lot of them are get them foam filled because of commercial use. And they run into thorns or get flats all the time, and they're tired of going through flats. So. Do they ride rougher when they're foam filled? Oh, they can, but those ones are so small, it's not really running any, so they don't fill it. Now watch this sucker. How many gallons are in a tote? Uh, 200. Well, that way, there's over 300 gallons. I reverse it for a couple seconds, so when I'm pulling the hose off, it don't splatter back in my face from the pressure that was pumping into the tire. Do that a couple times, you'll never forget again. <laughs> <laughs> for the rest of the day, too, I bet. The way that stuff smells. Yeah, makes you not want to eat soy sauce again. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting you have the pros do this. They don't spill very much. 
You guys might be wondering why we use rim guard or why we use any fluid in the tires at all. Well, it's very effective rear ballast. It's not very costly. It's out of the way. You know, any other ballast we, we hang on the outside anywhere is, well, it's hanging on the outside. Once we put this in, you don't even know it, right? Except that we see the behavior of the, of the tractor uh, work better. This ballast will help a lot for the side-to-side -side tippiness because it's going to be a low center of gravity. It'll help to some degree with the loader because it is on the rear of the tractor. It'll help to some degree. It doesn't really help with relieving front axle stress on the loader because of where it's located. Three-point hitch ballast is much better for that, right? Because the, the pivot point becomes the rear axle and that, that begins to take some weight off of the loader. But what we find is that you need all kinds of ballast. And this type of ballast being always on there and out of the way is really works well for us. What you doing now, Jason? Filling the air back up into it. Yeah, but these are air water valves right here. Okay. And this part right here unscrews. That's the air water valve insert. So basically what happens is you got your rim guard gun that screws into this. That's actually what holds it because this part's anchored to the wheel. And this plunger goes down, and that's what actually unscrews the air water valve insert once you have the cap removed. Okay, so you push the plunger down and then you unscrew the the right. It's like if you have the air water valve insert. Uh-huh. So it'll be sitting on the wheel just like this. You'll Sir. essentially screw your gun onto the air water valve. So at this point, the tire still hasn't released, not until you press that. Right, not until you press this on there and you unscrew the air water valve insert. A lot of times you want to pull it back because there's enough air pressure in there. It'll oh, it pull pushes the it back. back. Itself. Okay. So the air water valve is held in here. Yeah, out of the way of the chamber, so that way you can pump in fluid and release the air without any obstruction. And then when you're done, so you don't lose any of the fluid or lose any of the air and make a bigger mess than what's already going to happen, screw it back on and it'll stop, release it, and you can unscrew the gun from the air water valve. Now what you're saying is, is that the rim requires a little bit bigger hole for this air water valve because yes. it's, a, it's a bigger hole in here to insert. Yeah, most of the wheels that will take an air water valve already have a hole that big already anyway. Yeah. Like some of the smaller tires like that one over there, it has a small one for just a uh, low pressure rubber pull through. And won't we'll have a larger hole. But you can still put like a, still high pressure valve onto it if you want to, if you want to do away with the rubber pull through if you want to. Okay. What we found is that Johnny 2 and Johnny 5 both have the air water valves already on them. The 1025R, the 261212 rims have too small of a hole, so they do not have the air water valve. Woo! That stinks. The thing is about rim guard too is um, unlike calcium, it'll kill your grass, kill your crops. Because we've had one farmer before, he ran over a deer shed, and it was a hollowed out deer shed, and he didn't know it. And he went like a couple rows down a field before his tires started going low, and enough to where he noticed it. And by that time, it already killed everything that he was spraying. And with rim guard, you're going to be putting, investing money in the weed killer because it'll make weeds grow for sure. <laughs> Almost all applications that a tractor is used for values weight. A heavier tractor is better. There's only one exception that I know of, really, and that's mowing your lawn. In that case, weight can hinder, but most of the time doesn't hurt. Only hurts maybe in the springtime if you tend to rut it up a little bit. My dad used a heavy 3R series tractor for years and years and years mowing his yard, and it really doesn't hinder the grass. You might think that extra compression of extra weight would hurt it, but it, it, it really doesn't, at least from my experience. Are we done? I think you've done this a time or two. A little bit. Normally I only do one machine at a time, not a whole bunch, so. You think I'll notice the difference in uh, moving five feet forward? <laughs> now without the air water valve, you have to do something different. Yeah, I use this adapters for the smaller valves. This plunger piece here that would normally pull the air water valve out, I put an insert in there, it's like a valve core tool removal. So it'll okay. pull the core out, Allow me to pump the fluid in back in and screw the core back in without ever having to take the gun off. Okay, so you still get some of the advantage, just not as fast to fill overall. Right. You can hear the difference. It still won't take long with such a tiny tire. 
Now, according to their tire fill chart here, the 261212 takes eight gallons at the 75% mark. A lot of folks do fill them past the 75% mark and they just don't worry about it running back out the valve stem when they check. Even at eight gallons, that's 89 pounds. It's certainly enough to be worthwhile on these little guys. 180 pounds on two tires. Do you put fluid in the subcompact tractors very often? Do you see that? Some places that we do, they use their subcompact tractors for like forklifts. They'll have a forklift adapter on the front bucket. Yeah. So they want that extra weight on the rear end. And they'll go ahead and put counterweights on the rear end too. Some of them will fabricate a, a box that can go onto the hangers right there that got blocks of concrete or steel in it. If you want something like that, go to heavyhitch.com. Use code TTWT for a 5% discount. If you don't keep up with every single episode, you might wonder why we're adding rim guard when we always talk about having rim guard in our tires anyway. Well, this is a new Johnny. We just got a Johnny, uh, this one, maybe a couple of months ago, and so it came without fluid in the tires. So that's why we're adding it again. I don't know if Jason's gonna do it or if we're gonna do it ourselves, but we're gonna be taking off these industrial tires and we're gonna be putting the VersaTurfs on uh, that we had on the prior Johnny. We're also gonna put fluid in them. One thing I'm noticing is the precision with which Jason is working. When you have this done at the implement dealer, sometimes they might not be quite as experienced as what Jason is. He just has a better feel, I think, in some points for, for how much to put in and just, you know, he's just more familiar with the tools. One of the bigger challenges folks run into when they're looking for rim guard is finding a dealer. There are a lot of rim guard dealers and you can find it at rimguardsolution.com slash TTWT. There's a dealer locator there. You do have to input some information, I think, uh, but I'm not positive about that. It would just be contact information so that they can contact you with the nearest dealer if it doesn't show up properly in the list. They're not using it so that they can, you know, call you every day or something. I don't think I've ever been called based on a contact like that. But overall, I do like the idea of having a, a commercial ag tire service or a commercial tire service come out to do the rim guard. If your dealer doesn't install it before you get it, I think this is probably a good way to handle it. I just don't want to fool with it myself and he's got all the tools, so it's not that expensive. You can see the tire shrink when it starts sucking the air out of it. We get questions sometimes about should you put fluid in the front tires? Would that help even more with stability? I know of one person who has fluid in his front tires and that's my friend Levi in Tennessee. We've done some videos from his property showing the hills and he's got a, a serious challenge trying to, to mow the hills and, and just maintain his property. So he runs RimGuard in the front tires. It really only holds about 30 pounds per tire. I'm not really sure that's worth it. The other thing is these front tires don't seem to be real strong. A lot of folks, including myself, have had trouble with uh, thorns and briars and other sticks being stuck through the front tires. I've found that I can put some uh, tire jacked or other slime in the front tires and it stops that. Uh, so I would just as soon maintain that option and not worry about the 30 pounds on each tire there. But you know, if you do have a serious slope issue, that, that might be an option for you. Now these are the new VersaTurf tires. They're an option on the 2020 model 1025R. At least they're supposed to be. They keep being delayed and delayed and delayed. I believe they're an option now available as of the 2020 model. I hope. I ran these for probably 25, 30 hours on my prior 1025R. Liked them really well. They get a little less grip than the R4s but they're a lot easier on your yard. I think for most users that use this as a lawnmower, they'd probably be the best option. If you're using their tractor exclusively as a loader tractor or pulling implements, uh, not mowing your yard, you're not worried about your grass, I'd go ahead and get the R4s. I think they are uh, gonna get a little more traction for you. We decided to get fluid in both the VersaTurf and the R4s. Maybe we might do some comparisons between them later on. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but I thought it would be best to have fluid in both of those. We have a set of the turf tires as well. 
We could also try those. We're, we're not gonna put fluid in those because that would be the one scenario where you definitely wouldn't want fluid, right? Is, is if you're 100% using your tractor for turf applications. You know, in this era where we talk about things being made in the USA, that's an interesting part of this product. The beets are grown in the USA. The product is then made in the USA. It's, this is, you're helping America's farmers. You're helping America industry that does the processing. Nothing more US based than this. Does it seem like that tire compressed easier than, than those? Are those? Yeah, that's more of a commercial grade tire and this is, it's got, it's thicker ply. This is a thicker ply? Yeah. Cause the inner carcass of it seems smaller. Cause it's thicker to press on. I had to really thump on it, work myself around before I can even hear anything. And this one right here, it's a thinner ply tire. It's only a four ply rating. I think this one right here, it's a four ply rating too. But this is right here has also got the rim guard on the built into the sidewall. So it's got a thicker, thicker and stiffer sidewall. You see how the tire actually protrudes out past the lip of the wheel on the rim? Yeah. So it protects it. Like the rim guard of the tire keeps from gouging the wheel. And on this tire right here, it's more flush Oh, the rim the sticks out, yeah. So they're both the four ply rated tire, but that one looks like it has a thicker sidewall for the rim guard to protect the wheel and also protect the tire a little bit better. Good information. These are a radial tire, and those are bias fly tires, the other one. Oh, bias are stiffer. That's the biggest difference right there is the bias is a little bit more stiff. Radials got more give. It's like a car and pickup truck tire that will sag. Yeah. You've got some customers like on tractors and even uh, mining equipment that will go from bias to radial tires and they'll call and say, hey, I think my, my tire's going flat. low because it's yeah. sagging. And so I know they're meant to flex and give a little bit. You know, the radials are. So you know, it may not be an overall strength different here. It may just be because it's a radial instead of a bias. It, they're designed to give a little bit more, make more of a comfortable ride. Well, it is a big deal. These little tractors don't ride very good. They bounce a lot because the tires are so small. So any benefit we could get from a radial should help us. It's a 370R20. It's probably a unique size because it's a relatively new tire. Well, it's a 370R20. That's a metric tire size. I wonder what the standard tire size is in comparison to that. Yeah. Uh oh. Didn't want to do that. Too much. He sucked a little bit too much air out of it and it popped off the bead. Another reason why we like air water valves. <laughs> I didn't have to pack it full of tire mounting compound or uh, soap or whatever. Stuck that straight through on there and it swells right up. <laughs> had some farmers before that they'll come in like, you gotta replace the right rear tire or something. They're like, hey, you gotta work on your left rear too, it's flat. He goes, no, it's not, I drove it in here. There's so much rim guard in it, it forces the beads out. He didn't realize there was no air in the tire. He had a couple thorns in it. I can't hear any difference. It's got to be experience. He pounds on that tire, and it, it all looks the same to me from, from here. If you've got just like a loose toad on the bed of your truck without any way of measuring how many gallons you're putting in, yeah. you just thump on the side of the tire, and you hear how solid it sounds. And then when you get your way up towards the top, yeah, it sounds hollow. Right in here. Yeah, and you want it to be just below where the valve's at, so that way, when you go to check where your air pressure and stuff is, you're not getting any of that fluid inside your gauge or inside your air chuck and spraying it back on yourself or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> I could hear it there. I, I couldn't hear it before. Yeah, that's why I was thumping on this one. This one was a little bit more difficult to try to yeah, listen to Yeah, it sounds like it's about right, right in here on this one. It's like right in here. Just below where the valve's at. So that way you yeah. got plenty of room to check for it. I think like an engineer and it just makes sense to me to have a, a meter on your pump and just know how many gallons you put in and well, put in that all many that gallons. has loose parts and valves and stuff like that and you get rim guard, calcium, all the other stuff that flows through it and every now and then you'll get someone that's got like birds and tire with no tube in it and they got calcium in it and then you know you're pumping all that stuff out and you got pieces of loose rust and gunk and everything. So it's just yet another piece to repair. Yeah something like that just get sucked into that and just gunk it up and everything else. Well, you gotta make one good mess all over yourself oh, today. Oh, I know it, right? The first thing that's gonna come out of there is gonna be rim guard until the water gets through the pump. He's gonna squirt it out here in the yard somewhere. 
So on these uh, smaller tires, we have rubber valve stems. Mm -hmm. When I've done this before, I've got a bunch of comments saying that that this rim guard will eventually tear up those valve stems. Have you seen that? Only on tires that had calcium stuff put in it. Okay. Because the calcium will actually have a reaction with the brass fitting in there and it'll cause it to separate. So it won't be nothing just to simply touch the valve and then the brass insert inside the rubber pull through will come out. But I've never seen that problem with uh, rim guard before. Okay. And as long as you have a tire that's rated at like say 45 PSI and a low pressure rubber pull through valve that's not rated any more than what you're putting into it, you shouldn't have any problems with it. Okay. So the only time you want to st uh, stir away from a rubber pull through to a high pressure valve is if you have a tire that recommends like 65 PSI or more because most rubber pull throughs will only go to like 45, 55 at the very most. Okay. So that's when you want to go to a high pressure steel valve or air water valve if you can, but like on these steer tires right here, the holes are too small, so you can go to a high pressure steel valve. You should be just fine. Okay. Well, there you have it. Experience says the rubber valve stem is going to be fine. Done with this guy? Yeah, that one's good. We chose not to put fluid in Vinny because he's mainly for turf applications. There are times that I could probably use it, but I don't really want it in the outside duels because I take them on and off, and they would be awfully heavy to, to wrestle around if, if I had fluid in them. I, I don't think I really want that, so we're gonna leave him with no fluid. Jason, I really appreciate you coming today. Mm -hmm. I'd shake your hand, but. <laughs> Here you go, it's just wet now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I, I learned a lot about tires and rim guard and everything. You need to come by every day for our videos. <laughs> I've talked to my boss about that one. <laughs> Hey, I hope you enjoyed it too. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. What do you think, Mary? Johnny Five is alive.